hands on things to do. Um, so when you guys are doing your dynamic warm up, is it kind of like just like up and down, like you'll say like jog down and back and then shuffle down and back and skip down and back, that kind of thing? Yeah. For, yeah. Start with that kind of thing? Could be in line. Do you use a ball? After the movement. After the movement. What do you mean? That's movement too. So I'm not sure. So yeah. running, high knees, kick butt, yeah. You don't use a ball for that. And then, and then obviously, and then yeah. And then no, into, well, I mean, no, no. And then into some good. Type, you, I guess you could. Yeah. But then in time, into some type of ball activity. Yeah. Okay. I think is what he's saying. So once the once the ball activity has started, you guys call that not free flow, but that is free flow. Ball activity, but well, I mean, it depends on if you're in lines or if you're just letting the free flow, like as in a free range of a certain area. What are they doing now? That would still be jumping over and skipping over the balls and on the tag with the ball the the Okay. So what would that what would that do you guys do that often? Usually it starts yeah, with like a uh, movement without the ball, so they just get used to their bodies, they just to moving fast and then after the five ten minutes get the ball involved, so they're not like tripping over the ball and so not used to moving with an object with the so they move with themselves and then just take an object with them. Okay. For the younger age group it's fun to have them switch balls and then maybe try to stop it with an element of their body, their hands, their arms, their knees, back, their whatever, yep. you know, as they're flowing through to that, you know. Yep. Okay, so then once you do, once, because all I ever see are drills. I'll just, I'm just telling you, all I ever see out here, it's all Majority drills. My young group, it's bubbles that have their own individual, their own individual, that they do it, their own, they're not waiting for someone. stuff and you're you're throwing some throwing some uh, some different moves in something that a lot of the motor learning people will tell you to do is to throw in other movements before they do their move so you might have them you know like they're dribbling around and then maybe you maybe you call stuff out on command too um, so auditory and visual uh, or tactile stuff like is great for them to start to to uh, understand how to take in the information so maybe maybe you call it out every time so they're dribbling around and when you say whatever the movement scissor move instead of just doing the scissor moves you know before they do it they have to they have to jump 360 and then they have to do the, the, the scissor move. or you can have them drop down on the ground and do like a push-up or two push-ups um, and then get up and do, do the moves so adding something that's not related to it but is athletic in nature um, will help them develop the athleticism, coordination, and then a better understanding of the movement. Even though it's not free flowing, uh, because they're they're experiencing multiple things going on in their bodies, like it will help them with that for some reason. Um, do you ever have them use the ball and jump over it? Like for plyometrics? Like toe taps, uh, like toe taps. Like actual, yeah, like but, actual you know, jumps. I've done it in the past myself, but okay, sometimes I do it with the older kids, not the younger ones, because they might not be able to jump over it. They step on it, and whoop. Yeah. And then you're explaining to the mom why I got Susie's sitting down, <laughs> and her arm hurts. Yeah. So I, I, I don't do it with the younger ones, but like I would say 08 and above, so U11. Easily. Maybe start to incorporate it. Yeah. I do so, the lines. 
I was going to say, yeah, you can easily do the line, and then you can tell them also, pretend like the line is six inches tall. Right, yeah, yeah. So now, now they're jumping over something, but if they miss, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to wipe out. So here, let's have a couple people grab a ball. You want me that one or you want to do it? Yeah, they're all, I'm they're all round. Does anybody else want to do do stuff? No. Oh. Okay. If if you have kids, I would say you eight and above that that can't jump over a ball ten times fluidly and quick off the ground. There's a problem. <laughs> and I'm guessing that at least a third of the kids that you have can. not I right? Is that is that why you're laughing? Totally. Yeah. So, so just right off right off the bat, like that's something that you could be doing constantly. Uh, do you guys do passing drills? Just like stationary passing, just to learn how to pass a draft. So that's something that you can add to some of those drills. So I, I know you know a lot of times you get the pass, you tap it, and, you know, or you, you trap, push, pass kind of thing. But you can also have them have them trap it, and before they pass it have them do like five jumps and then do their do their their touches while they're doing that that person can drop down and do two push-ups so now every time you every time you pass the ball you drop down do two push-ups or you do two you know two split squat jumps and now you have to receive the ball do jumps over if you're doing that for three minutes like that's a lot of jumping and push-ups and squat jumps and stuff like that but that that's the kind of thing that even in like three or four minutes the strength that you're going to develop from I, the, one of my favorite jumping activities for the young kids is just split squat jumps because it's like a lunge but it's powerful you don't have to do many reps so you're going to do less than 10 reps but that's the like for relative body strength like that's an easy one like kids can kids can do it but you will see kids absolutely suck at that like you'll see kids who like can't can't drop down can't jump they'll be like doing you know doing weird things so you'll have to kind of coach them on, on some of those things so um i guess i didn't really need to come out here but you can stay out here and with me yeah yeah both, both of us are just me just um, you you both can so so yeah just you pretty much. No. so another thing you can do on the ball it, to help for balance coordination stability you want to do this with me? All right, we'll do any. Okay, stand on two feet. You're gonna jump over the ball. You're going to just land on the outside foot, and you gotta gotta fight for your balance. No yeah, matter how long it takes, fight balance. for your balance. When you get it, then you can go. Yeah, there you go. When you get it, then you can put your other foot down, and then you jump over the other side, hold it, and you jump over the other side. So you can stop them like as they're doing free flow. You can stop and say, okay, follow me. So coach, like follow the coach is like a easy game and you can just say you got to do it with me now they're getting the visual stuff too and the visual learning is something that i think has it's really challenging kids today um they, you would think that they'd be able to do it better because of video because they're all watching video but most of the time when they're watching videos they're sitting they're not actually performing it so to be able to just look at a coach who says do this like a lot of kids struggle with making their bodies do what their eyes just saw and take in and make it happen. So you may not want to be out there sweating and jumping around, but a lot of times like actually doing it would, could, really, could really help them get, you know, with the learning process. So the next one would be forward jumps. So now you can jump over the ball and you land and then you would turn around. Yeah, and then you turn around and do the other leg. Yeah, perfect. If you're scared of the, of the ball, they can just jump over a line or a blade of grass. Now he's jumping like pretty far. You don't, you can, because he's awesome. Yeah, like you can start off relatively, relatively small. The next thing would be incorporating twisting. So, you know, in there, you can, you can start to incorporate multiple fundamental motor skills in one thing. So you can jump and twist at the same time. So, if, you know, hit the line here, they would jump and land this way, or you can jump over, over the ball. You'll, you'll see a lot of kids struggle with being able to do that. Give it a shot. Yes. I almost landed on the ball. 
But you, so what, what he's doing, just so you kind of get it, it's not just like balance, but it's, all, it's body awareness and it's also rotation. And a lot of kids, a lot of the younger kids, really struggle with the concept when they're trying to kick of being able to actually rotate their body. They're just, I'm sure you guys see it all the time. They come up and they just kick it or, you know, they, 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 you know, they come across instead of being able to rotate their body. So being able to rotate and then balance can really help develop some of that, even though they're not striking the ball yet. And then the next one would be, uh, would be a would be a twist, but landing on only the outside foot. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Not on the ball. Well, almost at it. You landed on the inside foot, so. Oh, the outside. Yes, yeah, so now try I'm to. Like, oh, so fast. <laughs> so, whichever way you go. There you go. Yeah. Good. Good. Oh man. Awesome. I mean, you can see how hard he's like winding up to do that too, like. You, you would you would start on something you know on something small and just get the kids to, to balance but their ability to then stop and balance that's what a lot of the older girls don't have so now they are you know they're 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 planting and they don't have that balance and stability and then that's where a lot of ACLs go too so a lot of the just being able to balance will help um, you could throw in some stretches do you guys do any any stretching at all really no I, yeah so you could throw in some some balance type stretches um, like like just you know in the middle like okay everybody stop and grab your foot to your butt and then you got to try to touch the ground and come back up and just quick stuff like do three and then switch sides and then go right back into what you're doing um, kids will struggle with that from a balance standpoint ready give us give there us a yes yeah, so you're gonna grab your foot to your butt yep yep try to keep your Back leg relatively straight. Yeah, just go forward and come back up. You're a class Oh, yeah. But you only did. <laughs> Skip it like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe it like that. Oh, what was that? Not for the tier gallery. <laughs> um, all right, so, so they can stop and they can stop and they can do a stretch. Uh, something that a lot of the younger kids develop early on is super super tight ankles and calves because most of the time what they do is they do all this running and then as soon as they're done they just hop in the car and they sit for a long period of time especially you see it like as the kids get older and the distances are farther then they're sitting in the car for longer and longer and the tight ankles uh, and calves end up leading to knee and hip problems down the road because they don't have the range of motion so you'll see in like when we when we did stuff with uh, with your with your groups and with other like elite girls, probably one out of every five girls like cannot do this. Like they can't get in that in that position. Like they just don't have the ankle flexibility. So when they try to get low, instead of being able to you know put, move their knee forward and have that that mobility, they end up having to push their butt backwards, their knees are straight, and instead of being able to bend their knee and have that movement. And the movement's gonna come from somewhere, so because it can't occur at the ankle, then a lot of times it ends up happening at the knee somehow. And you'll see like a lot of knee injuries occur because they don't have the ankle flexibility. So even as simple as dropping down and getting a quick calf stretch um, before or after your in-between things can really help you guys ever have you ever played knee tag? Knee tag. Is that right? So knee tag. So knee tag. So if Nate and I are playing against each other, it's almost like wrestling where you're both offense and defense at the same time, um, but you're trying to touch each other's knees. You guys have played that? Lazy tag. Shoot lasers at each other's knees. <laughs> oh, this is okay. So you're not holding hands in this one. No, no. So have, have you guys done this? No, I'll just play it anyway. So you've never done it. Okay, so you're trying to touch my knees, my kneecaps, and I'm trying to touch your kneecaps. Okay. I can't put my hands on my knees. And I can't put my hands on the ground. You also can't push or pull each other. So it's just like. 
well, you can move around. So what this is gonna get kids to do is, is get in a low position, it's gonna get them used to reacting to an opponent, and then making quick decisions and moving side to side, like, a lot. And kids get, like, ultra competitive with it. So you ready to play? Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's one. I don't know, that's in a thought. All right, in a thought. <laughs> Right, you guys get the idea though. Okay, then and then you can real then you can just say, okay, now grab your ball and or whatever, you know, keep passing. So you're gonna just throw things in. Once they know how to play knee tag, it's easy to just, you know, in the middle of something, say like, grab a partner, 30 seconds of knee tag, da, 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 and now go back to your ball and do something. Because it's going to get a lot of different movements and and make them get a little bit create creative. I notice with kids that a lot of their creativity kind of gets stifled because they're so used to like doing things a certain way and they're they're not good at reacting to other humans. You guys ever see that? I have a question about that. The yeah. only thing that bothers me that I have from my ACL, so it drives me nuts. So if we do stuff like that, I can only use Google in. Obviously, it's like a working process and then you go learn how to do that, but should you, if they're constantly knees in, should you still play that game? At a young age, yes. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Because you will see a lot of people, like it's actually an athletic position, you know, like to be able to like like if I'm if I'm here and I want to go that way, like you you need to be able to kind of get into that position to create angles into the ground. Yeah. But they need to be able to do it safely. Okay. And and just so you also know that the chances of sustaining a non-contact injury go up like exponentially when you try to cut and change directions with less than 15. So it's not so much down here, it's when you're up here and then you turn. Okay. So getting them down in that position, just getting especially female athletes used to being here yeah. is so much better than having them always play upright. And I see a ton of the girls and guys, like they're all used to being up here, like, you know, playing their ball, you know, all the time. And then they go in for a tackle or whatever and they're up tall. Whereas they should get used to being able to get low and bend their knees. I think that's a huge problem with soccer players right now is that they're all used to being tall all the time and they, they just don't feel comfortable. So I would say, yeah, keep doing it. Um, do you guys do obstacle courses ever? Yeah. AD does. Well, standard. Is there anything on this list that you haven't done? Yeah, actually, um, I had a question about cat and mouse. Okay, so cat and, and mouse. Power ball. And power ball? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, that like that? cat and mouse would be uh, like kind of like chasing games, yeah. but it's generally just in short distances. So it would be if Nate's standing here, you know, maybe maybe we're on the line, and and I'm here. Like when the coach says go, he has to turn and run, or it would maybe maybe be more on him. He would have to turn and run, and as soon as he moves, then I try to chase him and tag him oh. before he gets like to that line. So you're not going like down the down the the whole field where the faster person is going to win no matter what. It's got to be a reactionary thing. But when you play those games, you can play them like with a bunch of other movements involved too. So like I could start down on the ground and have to pop myself up, or we would both have to like we'd have to say one two three and we both you know like twist and then and then we have to go. So now it's it's also about like quick rotation and then you know getting your balance and going so you could turn it into whatever you want and as long as you have like some of the concepts set up you can then incorporate balls into this kind of thing too so you could be we could be doing a passing drill and then say okay now just set the ball down now person one's going to chase person number two do a couple of those and then get right back into the ball does that does that kind of make sense yeah and obviously you'd want both people to both people to chase each other it really gets kids like accelerating as hard as they can because they want to touch. You know, they're trying to catch somebody. What was the other one? Powerball. Powerball is basically uh, uh, well, the one that I was thinking of. Powerball would involve like garbage cans, but you can just set a pin up, and they would have to like throw a ball at a pin. But they could also kick it at a pin. So you could just set a cone probably up since you have you have cones. Water bottle, same idea. Yeah.
Okay, ladder grills. I think ladder drills are, are great for young kids. They're a, it's a good general warm-up and coordination kind of thing. Be careful of just overusing a ladder drill and having them do the same thing all the time. Because a lot of kids will just, you know, they'll just get used to it, you know, going through it. Any of these drills, the more you can incorporate like intensity and pace to it, the better it's going to be. And you can also then change the rhythms up as well. So like, let's say you are doing like an icky shuffle. You could do one where it's as, you know, like it's as, it's as fast as you can go. And then the next one, you're going to like slow it down. And then say you have to like gradually speed it up. So the kids get used to being able to change their speeds. But eventually you want them to do stuff like at 100%. So any kind of speed drill that you're ever going to do, like time it or turn it into, into a race. Um, kids love racing. They love relay races. Uh, there's studies showing that relay races, kids will go like dramatically harder than they will other drills. But if you're just like running sprints um, or doing like agility drills without like some sort of a, an incentive or they're trying to go as fast as they can, it's really a waste of time. Like they're like if you're trying to do speed and agility like not at 100 percent like you are it's never going to work it's a complete waste of time right. it's 4 30. what other stuff can you guys think of anything that you, any questions or anything it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of the cool stuff already pretty not awesome everybody. what i said not everybody not everybody. Just say D right now. He's leading the charge. Somebody's got to lead the group, right? Maybe you got to come guide Crawford at his training. <laughs> what, what can we do more with the upper body movement in relation to the lower I body? I knew somebody was going to ask that. Okay, so upper body. So I will say this. Teaching kids how to run is like a separate skill almost. And that's where it's going to require more than just like two or three minutes of stuff in the warm-up in the warm-up section um, try to get kids to run on the balls of their feet I see a ton of soccer players that are on their heels a lot um, they don't get their knees up very well so they're taking little short choppy steps instead of being able to open up and and you have to try to get them to understand that the arm swing it should be like a forceful down and back swing rather than you know all this stuff and and it slows a lot of soccer players down they don't get how to like how to how to lean into acceleration they don't get you know how to use their arms and when to take powerful strides versus little strides so you see a lot of teeny little steps everywhere and without actually moving their bodies anywhere it's that's that takes a lot more work that would be something that like I could sit down and talk to you about but like we do that all the time and it takes a while you know, to like, Concentrated effort. You guys ever try to work on speed mechanics with kids? It's all down here, and then on the ground, at least getting them in that habit of walking here. Yeah, ladder drills. Yeah, you do a little bit of it there. But it's with the tools and holding them. The ladder drills are not going to make kids run fast. No. They just, just walk. Yeah, it's just coordination and you know, footwork. Kind of like but eventually, lot, they, eventually they have to go at them fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of drills. A lot of people always try and fix the feet for this. Yeah. I always fix the upper body first. So they, they're working for, you know, the icky shuffle are two, two in each step. I'm not going to fix the feet first. They're doing what they're doing. I'm going to get their shoulders like driving the elbow back, you see this as well, chopping up the elbows. The elbows need to be locked, driving the elbow back. Once you get that in time, once this is in time, then you can start to work, right, let's add some speed to it. Because a lot of drills don't get you pulled in. Yeah. They make you more coordinated, you know, like you need to better balance, better change of direction. So that's, yeah. for me, it's always one of the best things I try to do. Yeah, the ladder drill is like a one Yeah, it's like a one Yeah, get, get the, get the Ask then is so like yeah. teams at this age to get to games down this before kick off to, to play. Yeah. What are the elements that you would encourage yeah. most of the games then to, to bring into the team? Yeah. 
perhaps do you think we should focus on because it's a game versus training? So, the game or training, they should move through all three planes of motion. So they should be going forward, they should be going laterally, and they should be doing some twisting and rotation. It needs to be long enough that they actually increase their temperature, which is usually at about seven minutes. But it can it can also vary, and they can have you, know, you can incorporate the ball, so they could be giving touches. They they need to be moving, but it should also include like at least some some uh, some sort of stretching. It doesn't have to be you know you don't want them sitting down like stretching for an hour, yeah. but like doing some some quick stretches is definitely something. That they're doing. But I, I I would try to make it seven minutes of of multiple direction kind of activities. And I and I see a lot of you guys doing it. You know they'll. They'll, you know, they'll just be doing this stuff and then they'll jog, you know, down to the other side and then next time through their, you know, whatever they're doing, their hip mobility and that kind of stuff. They could just go jog, like, also, you know, like, they just need to get their core temperature up. Because that's when their nervous systems are going to work better. And I'm sure you've experienced that. It's a cold day, kids aren't warmed up, and the first 10 minutes it's like, oh my god, what is going on? And then, you know, eventually it'll start going. So you're saying... As long as you're adding some mobility to it, like a static stretch would be okay. Like as a depends what you. I mean, because I mean that with the toe touches, sort of getting into the dynamic. I mean, static. you could just sit here and you know just do this for five seconds and then do the other one for five seconds. You know, you could get a couple of you know hamstring stretches, some groin stretches, something just to kind of loosen them up. That's all totally fine. You just don't want to sit there and stretch for like a minute. I was gonna say I felt like over. Totally over the years of research, like people are getting away from static prior to activity. Yeah, and all the research on the static stretching is like long static stretches, like a 60 second, like long, you know, hamstring stretch, and then you get up and can you do a vertical jump? But after like after like two minutes, like all the performance degradations like go back. Yeah. So really, I mean, usually you guys are warming up, and then there's a few minutes, you know, when they when you're Get, you know, you're talking to the team and everything. That's where their body just kind of normalizes. So you could do some static stretching. Just I wouldn't sit there for a long time. Yeah. We can talk more about how it is to improve. Yeah, I've been saying. Yeah, yeah. Just cool. Cool. One thing about warm ups, what, what would you say about timing? How long falling? At least seven minutes. Yeah, thank you. The first thing, Chris. Thanks, guys. We see a lot of coaches like warm up in 30 minutes. That's true. Hey, if you guys have to go, thank you. Hopefully this helped a little bit. My, my email is on there, so if you want to get a hold of me. And I also wanted you guys to meet Jake. Jake runs our youth program, our youth performance program. If you haven't met Jake, like a lot of your kids come, if they come and do our, our uh, 11, 8 to 11 program, Jake pretty much runs that all the time. So your younger kids would be training with him. Yes.